Welcome to the President's Diary, where we take a look at His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali's week of activities. His Excellency started his week by delivering the feature remarks of the commission and ceremony of the Beechcraft King Air 350 and the Bell 412 EPI helicopter at Air Station London to Mary. The President said the introduction of these additional aircraft signals the dawning of a transformational era for the Defence Force, adding that it complements the larger asset human resource. We are sparing no effort in ensuring that we put our Ghana Defense Force and the Air Corps in the front line of modernization and transformation and creating an environment in which we are not second to none, but only second to ourselves. This vision requires transformation in thinking. The Commander-in-Chief noted that government is investing heavily in building the human resource capacity and to this end a civil aviation school is in the pipeline to provide advanced training. I have authorized work to be concluded before the third quarter in this year to have a full presentation to the Defence Board of uh, aviation school, military and civil aviation school to be run by the Air Corps, to be managed by the Air Corps. Where are we going to reach out to all our retired assets from the Air Corps and those regionally as we seek to build one of the most modern, advanced aviation school in the Caribbean here in Guyana. Over 87,000 children are the beneficiaries of the National School Feeding Program. This $2.1 billion initiative provides juice, biscuits, breakfast, and hot meals to learners. A total of 87,634 students are benefiting from school feeding, 42,735 from juice and biscuits, 29,691 from hot meal, and 15,208 from breakfast. On Tuesday, President Ali met with multi-talented athlete Emmanuel Archibald, who won Guyana's first ever 100-meter gold medal with a 10.24-second run at the recently concluded Central American and Caribbean Games in El Salvador. The head of state extended hearty congratulations to the young athlete on his triumph. The president also pledged his unwavering support to help Archibald further develop. With $1.8 billion being spent this year to further promote the Guyana Online Academy of Learning Gold Scholarships Program, government is on track to fulfill in its manifesto commitment of providing 20,000 online scholarships. In the Gold Scholarship Program, we have close to 17,000 students who are granted scholarships so far. A massive $3 billion has been invested in the purchase of textbooks to ensure every child has access to adequate learning resources. By the end of this year, all primary, secondary school students will have access to a minimum of four textbooks per student due to this investment in the education sector. On Wednesday, the President met with a team of executives from Caribbean Airlines at the Office of the President. Discussions focused on building a stronger relationship between the company and Guyana. Issues of concern relating to in-transit, possible increase of routes, increase the frequency of flights, and building out strategic commercial alliances in new areas of business were also discussed. With rice accounting for approximately 60% of Guyana's agriculture export, its production is estimated to significantly grow by 79% to 1 million metric tons by 2025. Rice yield has seen an increase from 5.9 metric tons per hectare in 2019 to 6.2 metric tons per hectare in 2023. We're working now on expanding our rice production. We had record production of rice grains from 559, 789 metric tons in 2021 to 625,092 metric tons so far, 12% increase. Rice exports from 2020 to 2023 are estimated at 1.7 million metric tons, valued at U.S. $743 million. Dr. Ali administered the oath of office to members of the Public Service Commission on Thursday. The president emphasized the importance of transparency, accountability, efficiency, and credibility in how the public sector is run. You, the newly sworn in members of the commission, are tasked with an important responsibility to ensure that the public service is populated by persons who possess the necessary skills, knowledge, and experience to service 
the people and to propel the country's development. The commission members are Mr. Maniram Prashad, Mr. Maurice Rudranath Gajadar, Mrs. Melsita Agatha Bovell, Mrs. Chandrawati Leela Ramson, Mr. Mohandad Gulsaran, and Ms. Janice Isabella Bowen. A total of 4,213 teachers were trained to utilize the renewed curricula at the nursery and primary levels, which will help to accommodate many learning capabilities. By the end of this year, a total of 4,913 teachers would have completed this training to deliver the new curriculum. A five-year strategic operational plan has been developed and costed that will inform the attention given to our students with special needs education. His Excellency also attended a night of reflection on the life of the late senior counsel Ashton Chase at Freedom House, Rob Street, Georgetown. Plans have been unveiled to redesign Guyana's premier healthcare institution, the Guyana Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, GPHC, into a new state-of-the-art standalone hospital. President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali said the transformation of GPHC will be the biggest health venture ever in CARICOM. These digital x-rays will abandon old technology for processing films. Doctor can read images anywhere in the world. And we are linking uh, our healthcare system with health providers around the world. So we have a wider pool of specialists to help us as we develop this modern healthcare infrastructure. As Guyana experiences exponential development, infrastructural investment in the housing sector has increased from $17.2 billion in 2021 to approximately $53.3 billion in 2023, representing a 340% growth. President Ali made the announcement during a press conference on Wednesday. The investment includes the upgrade of almost 69.4 kilometers of roads with an additional 341 kilometers planned for 2023. And this is only in the housing sector I'm speaking about. From 2021 to 2022, 19.55 kilometers of highway was constructed with an additional 17.6 kilometers planned for 2023. Specifically, 1.6 kilometer of the four lane connector of Great Diamond is in progress, while procurement is underway for 16 kilometers of four-lane highway from Great Diamond to Craig and then to Land of Canaan. Another notable achievement is Guyana's projected growth at an average of 25% annually from 2023 to 2026, with growth in the non-oil sector projected at 7.9% this year. This will build on the 11.5% growth in the non-oil sector in 2022, President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali disclosed during a press conference on Wednesday. Despite challenges, Guyana managed to grow its economy and put measures in place to re reduce the burden of elevated prices on citizens, while at the same time prudently managing financial resources. At the end of 2022, Guyana's debt-to-GDP ratio stood at 24.6%. The reduction is significant when compared to a ratio of 38.9% just one year prior. If you look at economic growth estimates, the world is estimated to grow at 2.8% in 2023. Advanced economies are expected to grow at 1.3%. Latin America and the Caribbean, 1.6%. <clears throat> the Caribbean tourism dependent countries at 3.2%. Caribbean commodity exporters, 18.7, and Guyana is expected to grow at 25.1%. This, the president said, demonstrates government's commitment to prudent fiscal management. The head of state during the press conference unveiled many achievements in the health sector, including the lowest child mortality rate to ever be recorded in Guyana's history. The life expectancy of Guyanese has now increased to 70 years compared to 68 in 2020. Our goal is to increase life expectancy to 72 by 2026 and 75 by 2030. The second issue, reduction of child mortality. Child mortality has slowly improved and is now the lowest it has ever been in our history. It is now 13 per 1,000 births versus 19 per 1,000 births in 2020 when we came into government. You don't hear these every day. You don't see the headlines reflecting these in the media. 
This is the reality of the Ghana you live in. This is the result of the investment the government is making. Real results, real benefit, real transformation for the people of our country. In keeping with government's continued efforts to enhance education at all levels, Spanish will be a required subject in the primary school curriculum beginning in September. This was also announced at the President's press conference. His Excellency also announced that all members of the Commission of Inquiry, COI, tasked to investigate the deadly fire at the Madias Girls Dormitory is likely to be announced shortly. I'm hoping that before the end of this week that we can have the, the full complement uh, constituted for uh, the COI. Dr. Ali has highlighted a need for a joint approach between Guyana and Canada to address the shared human resource deficit. The President was speaking at the Canada Day reception held at the Canadian High Commissioner's residence Thursday evening. I think as we celebrate today that we take a joint approach in terms of the human resource, human resource deficit and to see how we can work, work out a common agenda through which we can build a system that supports the requirement of both countries and our region as a whole. This area of development is already seeing concentrated efforts as the Government of Canada facilitates a number of training initiatives to promote the diversification of Guyana's workforce. We are seeing the results of this. We are seeing the improvement in service. But I want to position Guyana as an important destination for the provision of regional human resource assets to meet the skill deficit of countries around the region. Further, the head of state said establishing accredited training facilities will strengthen ties with Canada. We encourage Canadian accredited institutions to establish their footprint in Guyana for the training of nurses to meet your own demand, for the training of medical technicians to meet your own demand and also to meet the regional demand. On Friday afternoon, President Ali attended the funeral ceremony for the late Ashton Chase. Ashton Chase was a symbol of grace and elegance. In all that I've said, this man was a symbol of grace and elegance. Two of the things Pauline took from him fully. Pauline is my good friend, I can rob her anytime. He has a dignified presence that resonated with the weight of his conviction and the wisdom of the years of struggle within the union movement. The Cooperative Republic of Guyana has honored him deservedly with the nation's highest national award, the Order of Excellence. Today, as we say goodbye to Comrade Ashton Chase, we do so fully aware of a selfless service to our country. We do so with pride in our hearts that he walked and worked among us. His life reminds us that our sole purpose in this human existence is service to humanity. On Friday afternoon, President Ali swore in the new members of the Judicial Service Commission. The JSE is tasked with advising the President on the appointment of judges with the exception of the Chancellor of Judiciary and the Chief Justice. It also exercises disciplinary control over persons in judicial offices. Our judicial system is not without its challenges. We are woefully short of our full complement of judges and magistrates. This naturally has placed greater burdens on the existing pool of judicial officers. Now that the JSC is in place, it is anticipated that some of those burdens will be lifted and thereby allow for a smoother turning of the wheels of justice. Later that day, President Ali distributed 49 land titles to residents of Acme Housing Scheme, Virgin Ugen, East Bank Esequibo. The distribution exercise is a follow-up from a meeting between the head of state and residents of the scheme who had indicated their desire of having the co-op scheme regularized. This is part of our government commitment to ensuring that we improve the standard of living, give you better conditions under which you live, and ensure that 
there is empowerment at every level. And your title gives you empowerment. It allows you the opportunity to access financing. It allows you the opportunity to uh, capitalize on your asset. Some of you can now move towards a loan through which you can invest in small businesses. And this is the power of home ownership, home ownership and land ownership. Government is making critical investments in the maintenance of drainage and irrigation systems and farm to market access roads as part of its aggressive food security agenda. Drainage and irrigation work not only to mitigate flooding, but also help to provide farmers with improved access to their farmlands for their produce. From 8.4 billion in 2019 to 19.7 billion in 2023. This is the increase in investment in drainage, drainage and irrigation, a 135% increase. We're opening up new lands with approximately 260 kilometers of farm to market access road. Fair Weather Road and All Weather Road, we have, we have been able to open up more than 50,000 acres of new land for production. This was the President's Diary, where we took a look at His Excellency Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali's week of activities. Thank you for watching. Do join us again next time.